All right, boys and girls, I had this uh, 2015 Corvette, and I got to clean it up, apply some stripper juice, infinite force field, and then smooth it all out, make sure she's good to go with force field boost, and uh, that's basically it. So I'm going to get started doing a traditional wash on this thing and get it all cleaned up. I'm going to clay bar it with my fine grade or ultra fine grade uh, Japanese clay bar and uh, that's it so I'll, uh, I'll let you see me do some of the work and then I'll focus on the infinite force field application so that you guys can see that again infinite force field is going to be available to the public on March 1st 2017 so several months away yet but uh, I want you guys to get familiar with the application process with the product in general so that you really know what you're buying when you make that purchase uh, but also keep in mind anything you ever purchase from me you have my support a hundred percent I'm only a phone call or a message away at any given time and there's Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation which is a group on Facebook where we talk about only my products and my processes and other things that I've got going on so it's a support system for the product line there's many people that are there that use my stuff so check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation on uh, Facebook but you can also use 813-846-4406 that's my number um, all right, I'm gonna get this all set up and ready to go. I'll probably jump back in from time to time, but like I said, I will focus on the uh, infinite force field application. All right, so I just washed the Corvette and then I'm using the, the water, just regular water as a lube. And I did half, I did the passenger side, half of the hood and it's nasty <laughs> so when you clay and you get this kind of nastiness you need to knead the clay until you get a clean section and then continue to use that clay until you feel uncomfortable about using it again notice when I knead it we get back to a clean side so hose are down Go to town. She brings this car to me for a wash every, I don't know, four months or so. And that's really all we ever do. Once a year, she'll have me put some protection on it. Which is exactly why I talked her into the infinite force field situation because she doesn't take care of it like she really should, but at the same time she does care. So infinite force field will put you in a position where you can go longer without doing as much maintenance. However, maintenance is still key. And that's that's the same with most coating is on the market. That's that's the reason they exist, is because they last longer. Uh, and they generally protect better than waxes and sealants. But the thing to remember and, and the, the problem with the marketing in, in most coatings is that maintenance is still key to success uh, regardless of how long the actual coating is going to last or even how well it's going to protect. Because when that coating gets slam full of contaminants uh you know it, 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 there's no telling what the contaminants are at any given time but those contaminants are going to start to eat away at the exterior of you know the clear coat if you don't have a coating or the coating itself if you don't clean them off so it's very important and you know i have my own theories on things but i feel like once a month for a solid wash a good quality wash once a month is really all you need to preserve a coating at all uh, but it's important that you do it at least that once a month if you wash more than once a month then you run the risk of uh, wash and do swirl marks and scratches and that kind of thing the, the higher chance you have of getting that kind of stuff but if you want the car to stay clean all the time that's what you have to do um, Personally, I just like to watch water beating. I like to see that the vehicle is protected. And I also like 
to know that if I did have a big problem with love bugs or bird droppings or love bugs or, you know, maybe I said that already, but it, regardless, if, if, if there were an issue to happen to the car, it would be protected until I could get it off and then start all over again. So that's where infinite force field comes into play. Put a solid base layer of protection down and maintain that. Wash it at least once a month and then, you know, bi-monthly or even monthly or ever wash. It doesn't matter. You can use force field boost. And that is going to add back a layer of protection that the friction uh, caused, which in turn is erosion over the time and then the elements and that kind of thing are are knocking it down a little bit so you know if you're using the booster or i should say force field boost then it's adding back the protection it generally more protection than you're taking away by just using it on a day-to-day -day situation so anyway back to claying on the lower panels especially your uh front fenders I'm gonna watch out for tar and that kind of stuff. Picking up a little bit of that kind of stuff right now. And you don't wanna put that on the paint, so you always wanna need that. Or even, you could go as far, if you care as much, you could go as far as uh, using a separate piece of clay for those lower panels that you know, you know that the higher panels, the nicer paint is not gonna even uh, be affected by. So, these are all things to think about. Another thing I like to do prior to any any wax sealant, I mean, I don't use wax anymore, it's really old technology, but uh, any sealant that I apply, any protective product I'm gonna apply, I always wanna make sure that I get any like light defects out. Like if, if it's really bad, like a scuff, or um, you know, if there's a hazy spot or whatever, I usually will walk around the vehicle with some infinite finish in my hand and a microfiber towel and I will put a little bit on the corner of the towel and then basically this mirror has scuff on it and I'll see if I can't show you. I hate how the GoPro, this is the Hero 5, they always make, that you can hear all the noise uh, when you move the camera. Anyway, it's got a scuff on it right there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the infinite finish. I'm gonna rub it, see if I can't get that scuff out so that when I put the infinite force field on, we're not covering up that scuff. It looks like it's coming out. That's good. And there you go. No more scuff. Looks awesome. That's a little scuffed up and, and do the same thing. Just put a little infinite finish on the towel. And just go to town by hand and trying to get that haze out so that it doesn't look so obvious. And that's the key. We're not doing any defect removal. We're basically just hiding the imperfections so that they're not so obvious because the, the car's gonna look so much better after, notice it's gone. The car's gonna look so much better after the infinite force field is applied. See, there's a scuff there. I may have to get some infinite cut for that. We shall see. So again, infinite finish and let's see what we can do with this. Put a little effort into this thing. Let's see if it will take it away without having to get out not only the polisher, but the infinite cut. And it, whoa, looks like it's doing a great job of, sorry, it's so shaky. It's doing a great job of taking out that scuff without me having to go any farther for it. And again, this is not something that I'm charging this customer extra for. And notice the scuff is gone. There's a little piece of it left. This is something that I just wanted to do because it makes me feel better. Now, again, I've talked about lots and lots of times. I've mentioned that you shouldn't 
you should take yourself out of that hobbyist mentality and into the business person mentality when you're working on something for a customer. Work for the customer, not for you. There, you have to find a balance with that. It's, there's nothing wrong with going above and beyond, but it's when you go too far beyond that you start to lose money. And for me, removing those scuffs from the mirrors and wiping in some infinite finish on that little spot on the hood, it took me a minute to do that. It cost me almost nothing in product and the customer noticed those. She definitely knew that they were there. We didn't talk about removing them per se, uh, but I knew she knew they were there. So when she notices they're not there and it took me no time to, to handle it, she's gonna be happy. And she's gonna recognize that I did more work than she was paying me for. And I'm not saying that I'm looking for that recognition. I'm saying that that fulfilled my need to do a little bit more and the customer will notice it, period. And that's always a good situation. So uh, that's where we're at with that. There aren't any uh, other scuffs on the vehicle that I saw. So I'm literally just gonna get prepped now for the infinite force field application. Uh, one thing I do wanna mention though, um, something that you know a lot of manufacturers are suggesting is before you apply their coating, you have to do the paint correction. Well, the biggest benefit to infinite force field is you don't have to do the paint correction you can actually just apply it onto the paint. Uh, if at any point they, the customer wants to do the paint correction, uh, it will polish away. Um, and you can sell it if you're a pro detailer for what it is. For example, and I'll go ahead and use this Corvette for an example. Um, and again, it's an evolutionary process trying to figure out how much things should cost uh, my market is different than a lot, but when it comes to this particular coating, Evolution has shown me that not only was I charging too little, but the customer was getting a whole lot for the price that I was charging before. Right now, I have moved from $200 per application to now I sell a package uh, where I will wash, decontaminate with a clay bar, apply uh, stripper juice, and then apply infinite force field to all of the paint, all of the chrome trim if there is any, all the wheels, and all the glass. Uh, I will also do a basic interior, which includes vacuuming the interior out, wiping it all down, a quick, quick wipe on the, the windows, wiping out the door jams, uh, and then I'll use force field boost at the end just to smooth everything out, make sure there's no streaks or anything like that. But that's a basic interior and then the full outside protective situation, clean and protect for 300 bucks. I charge 300 bucks. I just put up four fingers and said 300 bucks. Didn't make any sense. But $300 is what I, what I charge in my market for that. It is incredible value. You can't I could talk to you all day about price, and if you're doing your price shopping, um, the cost of this kit uh, at $69.99 with the stripper juice, the infinite force field, and uh, the force field boost uh, with enough product to do two to four cars for that price is awesome. I mean, for the protection that you get, the durability of the coating itself, the ease of application, and that price, it's a no brainer not to offer that to your customers, period. So, um, you know, again, the other cool thing is uh, it has, it's a polymer, a very, very strong polymer and water blend uh, situation. So it's water-based, not solvent-based. So if you had any like residual water dripping down from the vehicle, which I would recommend not having the residual water dripping, dripping down, just blow out the cracks and crevices before you apply the coating. But if you did, you're not gonna dilute the coating or cause streaking or any of that. Uh, that's the biggest benefit to a water-based concoction uh, over a solvent-based concoction is uh, that you'll not have to worry about the residual water. Now, the bigger benefit uh, of the water base is that it's healthier for you to use, if that makes sense. Uh, it's not as caustic, but 
the problem with a water-based solution is that the water being used as the carrier, uh, so there's the water, then there's an emulsifier that blends the polymers, which are oils, with the water. And so the water is used as a carrier, much like a solvent would be in most of the other coatings out there. Um, the water will evaporate, leaving all the polymer behind. So the problem with that is that the water will evaporate very, very, very fast. That's why you generally want to apply infinite force field on a cool, dry surface. Um, or you potentially could get some streakings, which is not necessarily a huge deal for the most part. Uh, face, uh, Facebook, uh, force field boost will level all that stuff out and then it will cure really hard in its place. Um, you know, it, so it's, it's not a huge problem, but I definitely recommend applying infinite force field in a cool, dry environment. For this particular car, I'm gonna skip everything I'm teaching you and I'm gonna put infinite force field through its paces in direct sunlight. So I'm gonna get set up for that and we'll be right back. So as you've heard me mention before, uh, today is November 11th and the whole kit, all three products individually and as a kit uh, will be released March 1st, 2017. So this is the stripper juice, which is designed to remove any polishing oils, any wax, any polymer that's on the surface. Um, it's a very strong solution that does a great job of prepping the surface for Infinite Force Field or any of my other protective products. But beyond that, it has a priming catalyst, if you will. So it has a chemical agent that promotes bonding of not only itself to the surface, but it primes the surface for the infinite force field uh, polymer to grab and hold on strong for a long time. So anyway, I just take a green microfiber towel, which you can find on detailjuice.com, and I, you can do it two ways. And that, that, that's one of the things I wanted to mention. In a previous video, I showed you spraying it on the surface. If you don't want to do that, you can spray it directly on the microfiber towel, and it'll work the same way. Just prime the towel, and wipe her down. It's as easy as that. Um, the reason I like this way better than... Um, spraying it directly to the paint is because you don't have that residual product dripping down uh, which could potentially create uh, just runs and streaks if you let it dry on the surface uh, so I prefer this way again you need to do it in a cool dry surf uh, area but that's how I prefer to do it is to wipe, to spray it on the microfiber and then wipe it in and you don't have to worry about the drips or anything. Uh, you'll probably use less product that way as well. So when it comes to stripper juice, um, I would recommend that you spray it directly on the microfiber, wipe it on uh, until you feel it get grabby and that's when you know, I mean I could tell there's nothing on the surface. Oh yeah. You, you can tell a big difference. You can feel the difference between a stripped panel and a not stripped panel. But the crazy thing is, this this car had no protection on it anyway. So um, that's where I'm trying to get is use less, get better results. And that's the case with my product line. So keep that in mind when you're using my stuff, especially uh, the uh, the stripper juice. You'll you'll it, this 16 ounce bottle will go farther and you won't have to worry about the potential for streaks if it happens to dry on the surface. So uh, that's where we're at. Uh, again, the streaks won't hurt anything. You just have to work at removing them and nobody has time for that. Uh, that's counterproductive. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep walking around this car with the uh, stripper juice and then we'll be right back with the infinite force field application. All right guys, I'm back. I have wiped the whole car down with stripper juice, removing any polishing oils, wax, sealant, polymer whatever would be on the surface is gone uh, it also is anti-static I didn't mention that before uh, by the way uh, I mentioned that it won't be this stuff won't be available for a while and that's why there's no labels on the products I don't have the labels yet um, 
But anyway, this is the two ounce bottle of Infinite Force Field. Uh, I'm currently using regular microfibers to apply it. Again, I don't like to apply it direct to paint for two reasons. First of all, you get a more even coverage area when you apply it with an applicator. Uh, I prefer the microfiber over a foam applicator because it seems to absorb in the microfiber and apply a little bit flatter. Uh, but beyond that, uh, if I were to spray it on the surface, like I mentioned before, the water would evaporate too quickly and it would cure really fast leaving me with high spots that I've got to deal with and that's counterproductive. So anyway, uh, what I generally would recommend is prime the surface of the microfiber with four or five sprays. Now after the initial application to prime, I just use one spray per like two by two section. So anyway, uh, here we go. I'm gonna apply it to all this paint. Take your time, make sure it spreads evenly. That's very important. Make sure there's no high spots. Once you apply it, it does, it does, uh, it definitely, <laughs> let me regroup and say it like that. It definitely cures pretty fast. You can see when you wipe it on uh, the streaking where the product is laid down will flash really fast. That's the word I was looking for. But anyway, so I've done this door and it's good to go. And you just look around and make sure it's good. Now, the third step, which may or may not be necessary in every case, but is to take a separate microfiber towel. And this is the force field boost. Now what the boost will do is it will smooth out any high spots that you have, make that really, really easy to get a, a very nice, even transfer of the infinite force field. But it will also remove any streaks that you have. So if you had any residual water drips and that kind of thing, this works just like a detail spray, except for it's got that super strong polymer system in it, which is going to add a layer of protection when you use this to maintain the infinite force field. So it's going to add more polymer or add more protection than you lost over the course of the bi-monthly maintenance. Um, you know, so you're going to have more protection than you started with every time. So you're going to constantly get more layers of product on there. Um, it's not going to leave a residue or any of that. It's just going to be more protection. So anyway, with this step, I just like to mist it lightly and just go over everything. Make sure everything's smooth. Again, if you're applying this in, sun, in direct sunlight, so make sure it's smoothing out and looking right without leaving high spots because you'll you will absolutely notice the high spots if you don't do this uh, whole situation in a cool shaded place um, and that just means out of direct sunlight so anyway I'm going to get to work and we'll be right back to show you the finished product. All right, now that I've applied the force field to the entire car, I'm going to hit the uh, glass now. Same exact application process. Wipe it on. Make sure it's even. Then, the next step, like I mentioned before, a very light mist of force field boost. Make sure there's no streaks on the, gl the glass. Check your work. 
looks awesome and move right along to the wheels and that's where I'm going right now same product on all those surfaces it's pretty amazing all right guys she's all done I just finished the uh, interior as I mentioned before, I only did a basic interior. I vacuumed it all out, wiped it all down, cleaned the cup holders, wiped the windows out, and then uh, hit the door jams. Nothing fancy. So on the exterior, as you can see, it looks amazing. You watched me wash it, clay bar it, and then wipe it down with stripper juice, apply infinite force field to all the paint, all the wheels, and all the glass. I applied transform dressing, diluted 50-50 with water to the tires. This is the end result. Took me a grand total of two hours to do the whole thing from start to finish. Hmm, it's a good deal. Definitely a good deal. What's crazy is, and I don't recommend this at all, I mean, listen to me when I say it. It is not ideal to apply infinite force field in direct sunlight. Uh, I struggled with high spots because the water would evaporate pretty fast, but I got it done. Now, it's only like 85 degrees today. When I say only uh, in the summertime and it's, it's in excess of 100 degrees, so it's even worse. Um, I would recommend a cool dry surface in the shade or indoors to apply infinite force field. However, if you have to do it outside in direct sunlight, it's doable. I just did it and it looks amazing. So it's all she wrote for the day. Infinite force field is if you're a pro detailer, it is so easy to sell. It's exactly what the customer wants. They want, they want to maintain the, the vehicle. They just don't know, they don't understand how. Uh, and so education is part of what you should do as a pro detailer. Um, this is so easy to sell because it's what the customer needs. It's what you need. You need the work. They need it done. It's a, a match for sure. So again, if you got any questions for me, give me a call 813-846-4406. Check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook. And thanks again for watching and listening to me babble. Have a wonderful day.